Incriminator Audio. We've had many requests over the years to check out some of their products. Those of you who know, know they make some massive subwoofers. The Warden Series 3500 watts RMS. Massive power amplifiers that are known throughout the SPL community. World champions such as Carlos Rodriguez here just recently hit 184.19 dB at 60 hertz with his world record run. So we're going to talk a little bit more about this split force technology using the amps. But first off, let's take a closer look at the amp they sent over today. The IX 8.1 Reserve Series. Open up the box, you get your sticker, you get your manual, which covers the 6.1 and the 8.1. You get your phone cord for calling your grandma, and you get uh, this remote status indicator. I'm going to open that up in a minute. We'll show you some more about that. And you get your base knob. This is a metal base knob, has power, has clipping, has a really nice potentiometer. Now, it's a nice base knob. It doesn't have voltage on it, you know, but um, other than that, it's a really, really nice base knob. Now, the other thing in the box here, you get another little phone cord here for calling your grandma. Now, that's really for strapping the amps together. <laughs> you get this extension here for the harness, which is a remote status connection that gives you power and protect things like that that you can hook remotely up you also get three of alan's keys you know he gave up three for you so you got to appreciate that and take this bad boy out of the box and right off the bat you'll notice this thing is a beast it is thick it is heavy we'll show off more about the dimensions and some other things here in a minute but yeah just the overall look the ix 8.1 reserve reserve has nothing to do with batteries We'll talk about that in a little bit, what the um, split force design and things like that of the amplifier. But I got Nick to uh, give us a little explanation about what's going on with the heat sink. So tell us about it, Nick. The casing is actually one big aluminum uh, extrusion. It dissipates heat really well because it's not two pieces assembled because the idea is to have one true amplifier. And the size here, you can see 16 and a half on the length, 10.6 on the width, and 5.1 on the height. It seems much bigger than that, but it's just because it's so heavy. Here on one end of the amp is where most of the business take place. See the RCA inputs and outputs, Tiffany style, power protect clipped LED, remote indicator there that we talked about earlier, gain from 0.2 to 6 volts, subsonic, 10 hertz to 50 hertz, remote connection there for your base knob, low pass filter 250 down to 35 hertz, and you have the mode switch for master, slave, or mirror. You have the strapping input, the mirror output. You also have the three one alt inputs. And the thing I really like about this is they are lined up. That's right, in a line. And again, Nick is gonna explain this. And we're able to also have segmented power on grounds. You know, a lot of people do the plus minus plus minus thing. We're actually coming out with some bar adapters that will actually let you do four or five on each side in since you've actually got a, a true left and a right in terms of power. Yeah, boy! The amp also has a volt meter, which is there on the amp, as well as a fan. We're going to talk about the fans here in a little bit. On the opposite side, there's not a whole lot there. It's got the speaker outputs. They are four gauge. There's two, two speaker outputs. This is a mono block amp, but it definitely has uh, plenty of capacity here for hooking up your speakers. Now, this amp, you can check down for sound. Check the link in the video description if you want to pick one up. Currently $1,949. This is a big boy SPL amp. So yeah, if you know, then you know. The ratings, 4 ohms, 2,000 watts. 2 ohms, 4,000 watts. 1 ohm, 8,000. Or you can strap two of them together at 2 ohms for 16,000 watts. Now we have the dyno fired up. Let's try out some amp dyno test. First up, 4 ohms. Rated 2,000 watts at 14.4. As always, we'll do the certified test first, a 1% THD. And there you go, 2150. Our voltage is a little high, 14.95. LTO bank for the win. Uncertified up to clipping. Now this is interesting about this amp and you'll notice this across the board. Check out how much more power it does up to clipping. It keeps going and going and going. 3,812 watts, nearly double the rated power. Now, some of you are gonna say, well, what's that mean? Well, <laughs> in my opinion, SPL amps like these, you really care about the clipping power, not the 1% THD. 
and also the dynamics and this amp has got great dynamics too 3750 watts at 14.72 now what about that efficiency we measured 79 percent but we did take that just before the max power and i'm going to show you that in the next run why we did it that way two ohms mono rated 4000 watts of 14.4 certified test again first here we go and yes we get that 4000 and it jumped up again and i'm going to show you that at the end when i do the efficiency numbers why i took the efficiency to a different number than i did but still well above rated uncertified again check this out this dude keeps going it's like when is it gonna stop 6619 watts at 14.58 holy moly again using this amp with spl you are really going to care about that uncertified number and this amp has got big uncertified and dynamic numbers look at this 6900 it's going to go up i think at the end yep 7125 14.95 as far as here we go showing the certified test again i notice it jumped right there it jumped from 4100 to 4300 so we use the 4100 it's a more accurate way to measure the efficiency 77 percent efficient at two ohms now let's talk one ohm this is the big boy rating here 8000 watts at 14.4 certified test first and one percent thd and right at it, again, it jumped at the end, 79.64 at 14.46. I consider that a pass. Now, when we switch it over to the uncertified test, again, this right here is like unreal. Check this out. Yep, it's going 9,900 watts at 14.28. So this amp, definitely, if you can provide it the power it needs to run. It will provide you the output power for your speakers. And dynamically, check this out. People say dynamic test means nothing. Dynamic test shows the ability of the amplifier to handle peaks in music. And look at this, 13,485 watts. This thing has got plenty of reserve power. Efficiency at one ohm, we measured 69%. That's right at 70. That's fine in my books. Let's talk about the results. Here they are. I know a lot of people like to do screenshots of these and post them on social media. I would appreciate if you guys would share the video. It takes me a long time to make these and don't just cheat and give people the results. What about what's inside? PCBs nuts. <laughs> Let's open it up and find out. Flip this huge monstrous amplifier, almost 40 pounds worth of weight over. Take off the screws. And I know the people in the UK are like, what's 40 pounds? That's how much it costs. No, it is 17.5 kilograms to the people outside the US. Here is the beef and the split force technology. I'm gonna get Nick to explain that a little bit. So roll with it, Nick. The top board is smaller than the bottom board in terms of width. By doing that, we actually have kind of segmented the heat sink itself on the sides. So you basically get two different heat planes as far as the heat's dissipating or the fats dissipating the heat into the heat sink itself. So they're kind of on different planes even though they're one piece. A center aluminum divider that goes between the two boards that helps with vibration and that type of thing. Um, there's also a fan on that particular inner divider that blows to keep that cool. And then there's actually a push-pull system where there's a fan on each end that actually you know, pushes air and pulls air through the amplifier. Now, I wasn't able to give thermals for this because by the time I got it apart, it had been too late, but I will say that the amp stayed extremely cool during the operation. Now, what about the Do It Bump Dose segment? Does somebody want to sponsor this? We need some big, massive subwoofers to do some of these tests, and I figured, why not give you guys an opportunity if you want to sponsor that segment, get some exposure, get a lot of video views here. Let's see your sub flex. Check out the link in the video description if you want to sponsor the Do It Bump Dose segment. Now, what about the pros and cons? Things I like and what could be better or at least things to be aware of. Things I like first. Rated Power Plus in all modes. Triple 1.0 inputs. The amp is linkable. Has 24 dB per octave crossovers and subsonic filter. Active cooling. The amp stayed probably the coolest of any amp I've ever tested. Beefy Tiffany RCAs. 4 gauge speaker outputs. Has that remote status indicator too so you can hook up remote lights if you want. 
Things to consider, remote base does not have the voltage or temperature. Upgrade electrical, of course, this is an 8,000 watt plus amp. It's heavy, so make sure you mount it securely. You don't want this thing to fly around your car when you hit on brakes. Can't mount it under the seat because it's a little tall. Korean made equals more money, so get out your wallet. All right, guys, there you have my test of the iX 8.1 and Chrome Audio, this amp. Very impressive overall. Some people can say, $2,000, I can get X amp for 500, you know, that does the same amount of power. I can tell you this amp can run this power all day long. Probably will be extremely reliable because of the design, how cool it stays. This amp was sent to me by Incriminator, but it will go back to them. So these are my thoughts. Thanks as always for watching. Until next time, Big D, I'm out of here. OGs always stick around to the end. Let's try below one on. What about that 0.8? It's getting low in here. Let's try these tests. Certified first, 1% THD. Here we go, it's not rated at 0.8, but what will we get? Almost 9,000, 8972, 14.34. All right, and once again, the uncertified mode is coming up here, which get ready for this. I don't know if you're ready for it, but check this out. I'm just not even gonna talk. I'm gonna let Doc do the talking. Not quite, but almost 11,000 watts uncertified at 0.8. Nick tells me these amps are run at 0.3 for competition purposes for SPL all the time. So these amps just massive power. Dynamic 17,147 at 0.8. Let's try 0.67. Yes, we must be crazy. I was given permission to try this. Again, the amp was sent to me by Incriminator, but uh, we didn't get any compensation for that. So. Uh, just letting you guys know, I just do these tests and show you guys the results. Dynamically, we got 17,859, but the amp shut down. So then we'll move the camera here, go take a closer look. And yeah, the protect light came on. So that's fine as long as protection comes on. Again, these resistive loads are brutal. So we turn the amp off with the remote connection, turn it back on. Light comes back on blue. We're all good. So there you have it. Big D, giving you the wave, I'm out. You know how them sound waves go? Here we go, slow motion. Trying to lose my phone. Whoa!